This is the cheapest cordless phone I found on Amazon. It's brand new and it cost about $12. In this video, I'm gonna take it apart and see if I can interface it with a PIC microcontroller. Now, it was easier to take apart than I thought. There's two screws in the battery compartment and I just needed a flathead screwdriver to separate the body. And there's two screws holding down the circuit board. And it looks like you can still plug in the battery to power the phone. Look at how thin the circuit board is. Now everything is self-contained on the circuit board and nothing is hanging off of it. Okay, I attached the battery pack to the circuit board and the phone is powered on. I also made a little copper jumper. I'm going to short out the pads on the circuit board to turn on the phone and then turn off the phone. These two here are for turning the phone on and these two here are for turning the phone off. See if I can turn it on. Okay, the phone is on. The counter is on. Let me see if I can turn it off. Okay, the call has ended. And so I decided to use a two-channel relay board and all I need is two GPIO ports from the PIC microcontroller. I can also add power to these two points here to keep the battery pack charged in my project. For dialing a number, I think the easiest way is to record DTMF tones that represent a phone number and save it to a WAV file. And I'll use this Adafruit audio effects board to play it back for dialing a number. Now earlier I made a video about the Adafruit audio effects soundboard and I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, I found an app called Tone Def and what this app does is it does give you other options, but uh, you want to choose the DTMF option. And that brings up a keypad, and you can produce DTMF tones. And so what I did was I recorded 10 tones, saved it in a WAV file using the Windows computer sound recorder, and copied it over to the Adafruit soundboard, and I'm using that to dial a number. Okay, back to the phone. I did solder two wires to the circuit board where the on button is and where the off button is. And those wires are connected to the relay board. One relay turns it on and the other relay turns it off. Okay, I set up a PIR motion alarm system that will call my cell phone if it detects motion. Now when the motion sensor is triggered, the microcontroller will turn the phone on and it will also send a serial command to the audio soundboard and it will play a series of DTMF tones at the microphone of the cordless phone. This will dial the number and call my cell phone. After a short delay to allow someone to answer the cell phone, the microcontroller will trigger another audio file and will play a message and will repeat several times. This will give the receiver enough time to hear the message. After an appropriate delay, the microcontroller will then hang up the phone ending the call. Okay, here's a uh, diagram of my circuit. This is the uh, microcontroller and it's controlling everything around it. PIR motion sensor, the audio soundboard, relay board that controls the phone, and also have the amplifier and the speaker, and the speaker is placed close to the microphone of the cordless phone. It's kind of a uh, quick and dirty way of doing it and ultimately I'd like to directly connect the audio to this input. And you're probably wondering how I connected the two wires to the circuit board of the cordless phone at these two points here. This is turning the phone on, this is turning the phone off. Two wires here and two wires here. If you look at this picture here, 
This is a close-up of one of the pads on the circuit board. I connected, for example, the two red wires here to these points, and normally they're not connected. But when I short out the two red wires, it simulates someone pressing the button on the keypad here. A momentary short of these two red wires. Okay, one thing I need to mention is if you're using the Adafruit audio soundboard in serial mode, you'll need to ground the UG pin and momentarily ground the RST pin to reset the board. And that will put the board in UART serial mode. Now the UG pin will still need to be grounded all the time while in serial mode. Okay, here's a test. I'm going to trigger the motion sensor. As you know, I'm not using Arduino or Raspberry Pi. I'm using PicBasic Pro. But if you understand what I'm doing in my circuit, you should be able to translate that to Arduino C or Python or whatever. If you look at the pinout information on top, that will tell you the function of each of my I.O. pins. And also note that the WAV files that I copied over to the Adafruit AudioFX soundboard they're named t00.wave, t01.wave, t02.wave, and so on. Now let's take a look at some PicBasic Pro code. I'm using the serout2 command to transmit data at GPIO1, and I'm using serin2 command at GPIO0 to receive data. The number 84 transmits and receives data at 9600 baud. Pound00 carriage return is the command to play the sound file t00.wave. $0D is carriage return. After the file finishes playing, the soundboard will transmit done. And when the microcontroller receives done at GPIO0, then it will continue to the next line. And that's how I write code to transmit and receive serial data using PicBasic Pro. This is my cordless phone hack interfacing it with a PIC microcontroller. If you found it interesting, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see my future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.